I responsive reading this morning is from 735, and you can just follow along. It's all online reading. So. <clears throat> and it's uh, the armor of God from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Be strong in the Lord and in, in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness and in heavenly places. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let's stand and sing our operatory hymn number 441. All four verses.
when she sees another woman with a dress on like hers. <laughs> we stand in and sing our old gym at 730. All three, all four persons. Thank <laughs> you. 
told him earlier this morning, the Lord will supply your needs out of the riches of his glory. And that's what he did with me and Christy. He supplied my needs out of the riches of his glory because he knew I was going to need her to keep me straight. <laughs> and he knew she was going to need a lot of strength to keep me straight. <laughs> but, but introductions uh, are something, like I said, that you never forget. And, and I remember uh, the, the first time that I was introduced to Jesus. And that, that first time I was introduced to him, uh, I, I didn't accept him as my Lord and Savior. Uh, and, and I pray that nobody else makes that mistake. Uh, but today what I want to talk about is in Romans chapter 5. And uh, what I would like to introduce you to is, is Jesus, of course... But I'd like to introduce you to grace today. Grace is a thing that you can only be introduced to once you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this is what Paul talks about in Romans, Romans chapter 5. He talks about that introduction to grace and, and, and what a gift grace is. And uh, I was just telling uh, some people... Now, how, or a few minutes ago, how God has just poured His grace out on me in my life in the past couple weeks. Um, but if you have it there, verse uh, 1 in chapter 5 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you again for this day. And Lord, we thank you for being faithful to meet us here. Lord, I pray that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit upon this place. I pray that you would open up everybody's heart and make them receptive uh, to the message that you have prepared, Lord. And I uh, just pray that you would speak through me, Lord, either, either through me or in spite of me, ever what it takes, Lord, to get your message and not my message across. Father, I pray you would touch hearts and change lives in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, therefore, being justified by faith. You know, and, and that is really the definition of salvation in a nutshell. Justify, justification by faith. And what is faith? Faith is, is believing something that you can't see. Okay, because we can't see God. And the Bible never even seeks to prove that God is real. It just takes for granted that we believe it and that He is real. So that's what faith is. And we're justified by faith. See, faith is believing that Jesus Christ can do what He says He can do. It's also believing that Jesus Christ done what the Bible says He done. Now, what, is it, what does that mean? Well, what does the Bible say Jesus done? It says Jesus died on that cross for all of humanity. Whether you accept Him or reject Him, Jesus Christ died on that cross for you and in your place, it should have been me, it should have been you that hung on that cross. But Jesus took our place on that cross. And it's only by believing that, it's only by faith that we can be justified. And what is justification? Well, justification is kind of like being found not guilty even though you're guilty. Because justification is being found not guilty. And so what God does is when by faith you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God declares you not guilty of your sins. As a matter of fact, what happens is God takes away your sins and He puts them on Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, He carried the weight of every sin that you will ever commit, that all the world has ever committed, that all the world ever will commit. He bore the weight of that sin Upon the cross. Even the sins that you'll commit 10 years from now, Jesus Christ has already paid the price. But it's only by faith that we can receive the gift of justification, that we can be justified before God, that we can be in a right standing before God. Because when we're born into this world, we're born innocent. 
And, and the Bible says that sin is not accounted unto somebody that is that who doesn't know what sin is. That's why babies go to heaven. But now, when you get to the age of accountability, then you have to be accountable for your actions, and and you must accept God. You must accept. Jesus Christ, or you face the consequences. Now, like I said, being justified, it, it means we're found not guilty in, in front of God. When God sees us, he, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But when, when He looks at Jesus Christ, He sees our sins. We've been found not guilty, even though we did it. Even though we're still sinners, we've been found not guilty. And, and as I was saying before, we're, we're born into sin. We're, we're, born, we're born, and once we reach the age of accountability, if we don't accept Jesus Christ immediately, then, then we're enemies of God. We're, we're at enmity with God. And a lot of people don't understand that. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are God's enemy. Okay? And I don't want to be God's enemy. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, my nephew, he told me, said, well, I don't believe in God, but I'm not against him. I said, well, brother, if you're not, if you're not for him, you're against him. If you're not a born-again child of God, then you're God's enemy. And, I mean, that's a frightful thing. The Bible says it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And it is a terrible thing for an unbeliever to fall into the hands of the living God. And you can only get there by faith. And we're all born in sin. We're born, we're born at odds. And the word enmity means at odds with God. Or, or we're at war with God. We're against God. We're God's enemy. And, and so it's only through Jesus Christ that we can find surrender or peace. And, and it's just like two armies when they're fighting each other. I mean, as long as they're fighting, what are they doing? They're at war with each other. And, and what does it take for the war to stop? Somebody's got to surrender. Somebody's got to throw up the white flag and say, I surrender. Once that white flag is thrown up, guess what? The war is over. And when the war is over, what do you have then? Peace. And so that's what Paul is talking about here. We're born. The Bible says we're all born in sin. We're all born in sin. We're born sinful creatures. The reason we're born sinful is because we come from the line of Adam. We're all kin to Adam. Adam rebelled in the Garden of Eden. Sin was imputed into him. And it's like a genetic birth defect. It's been transmitted to everybody in the human race. So we all are born with this sinful nature which makes us at war with God. And if you want to stop the war between you and God, there's only one way to do it. You've got to throw up that white flag of surrender. If you want to have peace with God, you've got to surrender to God. There's no other way. That's the only way to get peace. Verse 2 says, by whom we also have access, or let me back up, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace. And that's the way it is. Once we, by faith, accept Jesus Christ, we, we say, look, Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. I believe you did what you said you did. And I believe you can do what you say you're going to do. Then God gives us salvation, which means we're justified. We're declared not guilty of our sins. And then God gives us peace. There's no more war with God. We have peace in our lives. And you know, every person that's unsaved, and, and I've been unsaved, so I'm kind of an authority on this. I know that unsaved people have a lack of peace in their lives. That's what they're searching for. Every unsaved person, whether you want to admit it or not, they're all searching for peace in their lives. They try to call up Dr. Field and try to get on there and get Dr. Field to help them. And, and you know, you used to be Oprah, she'd get on there and you try to tell your problems to Oprah. Or, or if you got it real bad, you get, go to Jerry Springer and just fight it out on the TV. And, you know, everybody's after peace. We, we can't get no peace. You ain't never going to have peace unless you have Jesus Christ in your life. But 
Because he is the author and perfecter of the peace that is in our life. There will never be peace in your life until you have Jesus in your life. Jerry Springer can't give it to you. Oprah can't give it to you. Dr. Phil can't even give it to you. You know, it's a shame that we search all these places. We, we go to bookstores and look for self-help books and, and, and all these things. And people make millions of dollars off of that. And all you got to do is accept Jesus and start reading the Bible and you'll have peace. You had, I, when me and Christy wake up every morning, I, Christy usually wakes up before me. Me and I wake up shortly after. And I get up. I say, how'd you sleep last night? And you know, she says, oh, I can't understand what she said. And then she'll finally, then she'll finally say, well, how'd you sleep? She's all never mind. I know how you slept. <laughs> Don't even ask that. Because she knows how I sleep. I sleep like a rock. I never have trouble falling asleep, especially last night. What about you, Ray? Anybody have to rock you to sleep last night? <laughs> Wayne, Linda already told me she didn't have to rock you to sleep. But even when I'm not out building, what about you, baby? Do you have to rock him? Okay. <laughs> but even when we're not out building handicap ramps, I don't have trouble sleeping at night. Even when I have trials and tribulations in my life, I don't have trouble sleeping because I have peace in my life because of Jesus Christ. Nobody can give me the peace that Jesus can. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ wants you to get the peace, but a lot of times we want Jesus to bring it to us. We want it served up on a platter, but a whole lot of times if you want the peace that Jesus Christ can give you, you've got to take an action to get it. Maybe number one, you got to get down on your knees and humble yourself before God and ask Him for peace. Say, Lord, I don't feel like I've got the peace that I need and I plead for peace that passes all understanding. You need to claim that promise that's in the Bible. This Bible has got over 1,500 promises in it. And I believe God will be faithful to each and every one of them. you got to claim that promise. We, we've got to pray scripture sometimes. I, I tell God, I say, look God, it's wrote right here that you'll grant me the peace that passes all understanding. You see it, God, it's right here. I need that. I'm praying this right now. And God is faithful. He will give it to you. But hey, guess what? Sometimes you might have to open up your Bible and read it a little bit before you get that peace that passes understanding. You want to have a good night's sleep? Have a little talk with God before you try closing your eyes and read a couple of verses of Scripture. You won't have no trouble sleeping. You'll fall right to sleep and sleep like an angel. But the world is seeking after peace in the world's way. The world thinks you can get peace by having a lot of money or, or, or living in the right neighborhood or, or have security in your job. I'm going to tell you, there ain't no job in the world where you got security in. They're all, you said to get fired anytime, especially if you're a preacher and say the wrong thing. <laughs> got my fingers wrong. <laughs> you tell the wrong person they're going to hell, you might have a short uh, stay at certain churches. <laughs> we ain't got to worry about that around here. <laughs> because we all know, hey, if you don't know Jesus, where are you going? When you die, you're going to hell. It's only two options, heaven or hell. It's no in-between. According to what my Bible says, absent from the body is present with the Lord. Now, how long you stay present with Him after you're absent from your body depends on whether you know Him as your Lord and Savior or not. man told me a long time ago, he says, Charlie, it ain't, it ain't, I'm not too worried about what's going to happen when, when I die. You know, he says, I'm worried about what's going to happen 30 seconds after I'm dead. Because, you know, that's where the rubber meets the road. Where are you going to be 30 seconds after you're dead? It can only be one of two places. Because you're going straight to have an appointment with Jesus when you die. When your heart beats the last time, when you breathe your last breath, you got an appointment with Jesus. You're going to see him. But now how long you stay with him? Depends on what you've done before that last heartbeat, before that last breath. If you have been saved by faith, if you've been justified by your faith, if you've been given peace that God gives, then you'll be with Jesus for eternity. Not only 
only 30 seconds, but 30 million, million seconds. You'll be with Him forever. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, there's only one other alternative. And it's south and it's hot. And I'm going to leave it at that. And Christy nods with approval. <laughs> but see, not only do we have peace, I mean, let's face it. If the only benefit we got from being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ was the peace that he gives us, it would be worth it just for the peace. But the peace that he gives us is just the beginning, according to Paul here. He says, but wait a minute. And this kind of this is like a redneck interpretation. He says, wait a minute, there's more. Listen, by whom we also not only do we have peace, but we have access by faith. Because you have faith, you have access to something else. Not only peace, you have access into His grace. Into His grace. Now what is grace? I'll tell you what grace is. <coughs> grace is just favor with God. Grace is favor that you don't deserve that God gives you because He loves you. Grace is when your kids have been misbehaving and you tell them, when I get you home, I am going to light your rear end up with that paddle. And then when you get home, you don't do it. Now, I mean, that might be bad parenting. Right? <laughs> it's a form of grace. We'll call it grace. But, but basically, it's, it's getting what you don't deserve. So not only do we have peace with God, but we have favor with Him. Now, oh my goodness, favor, God's favor. What is, what is God's favor? I'll tell you what God's favor is. God's favor is when you're going to school and trying your best to keep up with your classes and life happens and you can't get your paper turned in on time and, and you just, you say, you give it over to God and say, God, I did the best I could. I know I did and you know I did and whatever I get is what I get. And then God's favor. Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is when your professor emails you and he said, Charlie, what's going on? You turned in every other paper. Why did you turn in this? And then I tell him about how life happened and this happened. And then grace says, just turn in what you got, Charlie. Just turn in what you got right now. I said, okay. And then grace says, you get a 90 on that paper that you should have got a 50 on. That's grace right there. That's God meeting you. You see, grace, though, grace, a lot of people just want grace hand-delivered, just like the favor, just like the peace. But a lot of times you got to meet God halfway. you got to meet Him. you got to put feet on your faith, and you got to do your part. Uh, a man told me one time, he said, you got to do everything you can do and then leave it to God to do the things only He can do. That's what we need here. Now, but grace, what is grace? Grace is a standing. He says in, in verse 2 here, by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Well, uh, I, I think I'm in, see, I'm in a good stand. Who am I in good standing with? Uh, hopefully I'm in good standing by the time about this church. Because there's see, see, some other, you know, I'm a member in good standing in the fire department. Although, you know, I don't run a whole lot of calls, I pray there for them. I'm the chaplain. So I'm a member in good standing in, in the fire department. But see, we, we, I want to ask you this. Are you a member in good standing of God's grace? That's what's important. Are you standing in God's grace this morning? Because I'm telling you, if you're not standing in God's grace, I don't know how you're standing at all. It's only by God's grace that we're here this morning. It's only by God's grace that you're going to take that next breath of air. It's only by God's grace that we have the health and the ability to be here this morning. It's only by God's grace that we're able to go out into this world and lead people to Jesus Christ. If it was not for God's grace, what would we have? We would have what we really deserved. And what is that? Death, hell, and the grave. But glory be to God. Three nails and a cross defeated all of that. We don't have to worry about death. 
death, hell, or the grave. Because Jesus Christ has defeated that. He has defeated it. Now we have good standing with God and we stand within His grace. We stand within His favor, within His mercy. And Paul says, oh, not, and not only that, hang on, i got something else to tell you. He says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. And that's what people say, what? What did you say, Paul? We glory. We, we, we give God glory even when we have trials and tribulations in our lives. Man, that's the part when you start reading, you say, well, I'll leave off on another verse to read. I'll come over here to Colossians or somewhere. We don't want to hear that. I want to hear about, I will have joy in the tribulations. But, hey, it's true. Because the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, the law of the page there it is. The Bible says we glory or we can give God glory in tribulations also. When we are walking in God's grace, we can give God glory and praise even in the middle of trials and tribulations. Because that's when it counts the most. Oh, yeah, you want to you wanna see God work miracles. You start praising Him right in the midst of that storm. That's when God will open up the heavens and pour out a blessing on you. You praise Him when time gets tough and things will change. We can praise Him in times of tribulation because we are standing within His glory and His grace and His peace. Yes, Lord. And he says he knowing that peace worketh patience and, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. And, and this hope, this hope that tribulations and, and all, you see, because what Paul is saying here is, is tribulations bring about a, a spiritual maturity. It's all part of sanctification. Every trial and tribulation in your life is working for a purpose to mold and make you into a more usable person for Jesus Christ. It's molding and making you into a spiritually mature person. Somebody that Jesus can really use and eventually it's going to lead us into the arms of Jesus. It's going to lead us to know Him more. It's going to lead us to depend on Jesus. Christ more. You know, it's just like it's just like working out. It's just like working out. When you when you first start walking or running, you say, I'm gonna start running, you run about 50 yards and you say, I think I'll walk. <laughs> then, but then the next day you say, I'm gonna try a little better. You take off running and get about 60 yards and say, Well, whew, I'm gonna be able to walk from here. It's it's a process, but you're growing the whole time. And every time you have a trial or, or a problem in your life and you depend on God for that and He comes through for you, it builds your faith and it makes you a more mature person. And it allows you to have that hope in Jesus Christ. Because like I told you before, our hope, the Christian hope, is not like the world's hope. The world's hope depends on circumstances. It may or may not happen. I hope it does, but it might not. The Christian hope is a confident expectation of Jesus Christ and what he says. My hope is in the Lord. And all of our trials and tribulations builds our hope and it makes our hope even more confident because I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his church. And if we're alive when he comes back, guess what? We don't have to die. We're the only religion in, that there is where there's the possibility that you don't have to die. See, poor Muslims, they got to blow themselves up and kill all kinds of other people. But God says, hey, y'all might not even have to die. I might just take you on home. That, that right there ought to make you convert from being a Muslim. It would mean, let me see, strap a bomb to my body and blow up something or believe in Jesus and get raptured away when the church comes. That's, that's not a real difficult decision for me, but you know, I guess for, for some people it's, it's a little bit harder. So, uh, this week, 
This week, as we're, as we're going about our lives, we, we need to remember and we need to, we need to apply these things to our lives. We need to remember that we are justified. If we know Jesus Christ, we've been found not guilty. And, and Satan wants to whisper in your ear, you're not worthy. You're not really saved. You, you don't have to listen to that preacher. You don't have to go by the Bible. But you listen to God. And you keep this Bible open. And you get down on your hands and knees. And you seek God's face. And you will see the result of His peace and His grace and the hope of His glory in your life. I promise you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for every day. Sundays are so special because we get to come together and fellowship our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, thank you for blessing us the way that you do. I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, that before they leave here today, they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, you just be with us now as we uh, go into our time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.